Hey guys, Kevin Getz here from Mute Profit, and welcome to another installment of Songwriting Masterclass. If you watched the previous video, you know that I basically got through the first verse and then hit the part where the chorus should go and was so swept up in how dramatic I knew it was going to sound from the fill leading into it that I just couldn't resist continuing to work on it. So even though a day should have passed between the uploads, this actually is taking place right after the previous video ended. So we had our verse that sounds like this. That ending just got me so excited that I'm going to go ahead and make the chorus now. Okay, I want to go back to 4-4, obviously. Now I have that, what I did with the choir at the end there, completely by accident. That made me think of something really epic, so we're going to do that. That's a D minor. This whole thing so far has kind of mostly been in the key of D. I think I want a kind of a unequal rhythm here. This should be a tied whole note. Whoops, that was a tied whole note. I meant to do that on the next measure. That's a C major. Let's give that the same unequal rhythm back into that D minor. And let's do kind of a tied... Um, yeah, let's make this a tied dotted half note. So right now it sounds like this. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I approve. And I want to add in some drums. And then we'll get to work on the guitars and the vocals. Actually, no. You know what? I want to do the guitars first. We're starting on a D, so I want a D power chord. I think that's the progression I want. Let's go up that, uh, what's that interval? Minor sixth? But I want to cover it up more. I want to make this riff interesting. Maybe something to the effect of... If we tie this... And then we can have a slower repetition of that 3-5-6. Choir going down to that C major. I'll just play a C power chord up here. Let's do kind of the same thing rhythmically. Maybe. No. That'll work. Kind of a pen pentatonic looking thing. So... And now we want to match the drums to kind of the rhythm of that guitar riff we've come up with. I think, I really feel like this is epic enough that it really ought to open on a cymbal hit. Yeah, I was right. Maybe another one here as the guitar changes chords. Yeah, cool. And maybe... Yeah, we kind of have the kick drum supporting the guitar's single note flourish there. I think I want just full open hi-hats here. Something like that, maybe? Cool. 
and maybe we could repeat this groove since the guitar follows the same rhythm. Uh, there needs to be a fill there at the end. Something like... And that'll lead nicely back into that cymbal hit at the start of the next measure. Um, now that we've got the kind of main elements set up, let's bring in the vocals. We had this nice harmony here. I think that's almost self-explanatory. It should drop all the way down to there. No, wait. Actually... So we've got that harmony, we can have the lower harmony play that note, and this one play a major fourth above it, or a major third, sorry, major third above it. I think it'd be a little forced if we had the vocals come in through that whole time, so let's skip ahead to here. Skip up a minor third. No. Yeah, the 8-5-3 is the same as here in the 3-4. Oh, that's interesting. I actually ended up following that same pattern. And maybe something like... I like that, with the quarter note and two eighth notes. And let's skip way up to here. Is that 853 motif again? There needs to be a harmony there. So, those ending three notes are the same as the 3 4 intro to the chorus. I like it, um, but it needs to tug at the heartstrings just a little bit more. I can tell already, I mean, I said from the very beginning I wanted this to be kind of melancholy yet epic, so I really want to kind of make people feel when my singers start in belting this out. Let's copy this again. Paste it. That part needs to change. Want uneven rhythm again? I think this should be tied. And that forms pretty, a pretty consistent, very minor harmony with the backing chords. That's why I think that works. And guys, just for the record, in my opinion, the best way to do stuff like this is really just to plug in notes until it sounds good. But a, a general tip or two, there's a lot of drama to be found in minor third skips. So say you go down from six to three and then hop up to five, that five that you skipped over is very dramatic, and there's also a lot of drama to be found in half steps. So this five to six here. Those are some great ways to feel very uh, melodically forceful. It really tugs at their attention. Now because we have the vocal melody ascending here, I feel like the choir needs to mirror that. So I'm actually going to change this into another dotted half note. That's actually another voicing of that same C major. And one more thing that I want to add here. I think Chris should get a lead guitar section. And this is another thing where if you're going to write for another guitarist, know their style damn well. 
So I want Chris coming in here. Kind of reinforce the main vocal melody. And as I said, you have to know your other guitarist's style really well if you want to write for them. Fortunately, I do know Chris's style really well, and I know exactly what he'd do here. His huge skill is tapping. So he would probably play something to this effect. Got a minor six there. Pedal pointing the F, which harmonizes with the D motif that most of this stuff is playing. Drop down to a fifth. No. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Minor third. Add just a little bit of dissonance by landing on this note for a little bit, and then resolve off of it. Let's tie it. There we go. So all together. I think it should only repeat that much for now, and then hop back into a verse, and then repeat double length. I don't know, I'll figure out the specifics. That's the chorus for now, and I think that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to discuss anything I've said in this video, you could leave a note in the comments. If you want to help me out at all, you could like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel, and you can also click the annotations to watch some other videos I've done. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Mute Profit Band, and if you're in the mood to listen to some music, check out muteprofit.bandcamp.com. Thanks again, and until next time, see ya!